Hello, Trev. How are you doing? Yes, I'm doing very well. And how are you doing this evening? <laughs> very well. Very good. Well, well, One moment. There is um, a slight communication technicality. Okay. Yes, there it is. Um, how are you doing this evening? Very well, very well. Uh, Trav, last time we talked, it was during the um, summer, and a lot of things have uh, transmuted for me since then. Yes, and the transmutations are something that is very exciting. Yeah, yeah, a lot of things. Um, I, I was a lot more disconnected at that time than I am, say, tonight. Yes, in <laughs> our perception... The amount of energy that you have allowed yourself to purge through, the amount of resistance within your chakra systems has decreased a great deal. The amount of energy that is flowing through your chakra systems are flowing much greater. In that way, in our perception, how we would see you are over 37% in less resistance and less restriction. And with your emotional context, you are 42% less resistant. And in that way, as you are looking at the overall concept of your chakra systems, you are looking at the certain aspects of each chakra, each of them representing the concept of a theme within your existence, but also a dimensional effect of the non-physical self. And in that essence, you have cleared emotionally and also connected to dimensionally higher versions of yourself. <laughs> yes, Trev, yes. And you know what? Um, in the past when I was speaking to you, we were speaking about um, reptilian-type entities. Yes! Yes. And you know what? I've recognized that I have um, a, a great number of connections to these entities. Yes, there are many entities that are connected with you, not only throughout your journey, but also in this now moment. And in these entities' energy, they are ranging from those that are within your oversoul, that are type 2, all the way from malevolent, all the way to the very positive and very connected and very loving type 2 entities, but also now you are connecting to a great deal more of the entities that are considered to be type 1. Yes, and you know what, Trev? I think I had a visitation from one of these entities in my basement. Yes, there has been many entities that are connecting with you, and as you are connecting to each of these entities, you are accessing more energy in the non-physical sense where it is not being noticed by your physical body, it is not being noticed by your emotional body, but the energetic body is creating a greater influx of energy and connection to them. And in other entities' connections, they are connecting with you in the emotional state, others directly through your chakras, in this specific concept in which you are speaking of, if you desire to speak about that certain concept, then we are able to do so if you wish to speak of this meeting in your basement. Yes, it was. Well, I've had two. I've had one entity that I would consider a type two that um, had been making connections to me, and I interacted with the entity by projecting but by not trying to avoid the entity, but I projected a spiritualism of love to the entity? Yes, and this is what you wish to speak of more directly. No, 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 that was just one incident that I was um, commenting on, that a negative, a negative type one connected with me, but I reinforced the connection by asserting love to the entity. But more directly, it was a, a, a reptilian entity that seemed to be a type one that was blue, if I'm correct. Yes, this energy 
in the type one, you are speaking of the entity who is a positive polarity. Yes, and and I remember for some reason I was sitting in a chair and I keep seeing I saw a flash in my mind of the entity, and it was in the room and it was a high blue type skin and it seemed to have a lot of joy and happiness radiating from the entity seemed to have a lot of happiness um, radiating from it. Yes, this is not the only type 1 entity who is reptilian in nature that is connected to you. This entity is more perceivable by your consciousness. It is more understood by the energy within you to accept the perception embracing your third eye energy. But in that essence, as deeply as that entity is connected to you, there are also one member of our own race that is connecting to you, that is very deeply interacted with you. And there are also at least seven different reptilian races besides the two that we have expressed that are of what you would perceive the type 1 energy or extremely loving type 2 entities that are connected to you, that have been with you throughout your journey in the last one and three quarters of years. And in that essence, some of them that are not connected to you in this moment, that were connected to you before three years previous, those entities step aside due to the fact that they were only there with you through certain times of your own pain and resistance that you have. So these new entities that are nine in total are representations of a new energy within your own self. And it goes to show your own consciousness that as you change your overall vibration, as you change the essence of your own heart and mind, it gives you the opportunity to have new energy connect to you from your oversoul, from your soul family, but also the entities that are connecting now so more than previously are truly in connection with you because of the interest that they have with the amount of energy you have transmuted with the shift that you um, had and occurred within you. And this gives them a great deal of excitement to be able to experience you and your energy more directly. Yeah, Trev, that's exciting, man. And, and you know what? I, the entity that you're speaking of from um, Capella, right? Is that Carbor Yitney or... Yes, this entity that we have expressed previously is one entity, but there is a new entity that steps forward from our race that is connected to you. And in that essence, Carboriotny, as you are aware within your own mind and heart, knowing that that entity was connected to you, this entity is one that steps forward from a newer energy that is more so uh, deeply interacting with both your third chakra, fourth and fifth chakra. And this entity is one that has not been given an assigned name to your collective. But for the sake of this moment, we will express that this entity's name is Tysor Yitni. <laughs> That's cool, Ty Sor Yit Me. Yes, this is a representation of the energy it desires to share with you. Trev, can you put this entity through to say hello for a moment? Yes, one moment, please, and we will connect you. Thank you. Before we connect Ty Sor Yit Me to you, we will hydrate the host's throat so that he is able to keep this connection. Marvelous. Yes! One moment, please. <clears throat> Good evening, Jamal. Hello. Is Ty Sor Yitney, correct? This is Ty Sor Yitney. And I am expressing my great love to you and my own great excitement of being here. 
Wow, that that's wonderful. Um, so I've been feeling a connection to you in recent, uh, especially in the last week. There is a connection that we desire to share with you very deeply that goes beyond the time period as of late. This connection is the one that you shared with our race the first moment that you knew that we existed. In that time, um, the one that you call Trebojitni is connecting to all of us. We hear the experience through him. We hear and feel the connections with all those who have shared their own connections with us. So as you shared your excitement about Trevor Yitney, and he shared his knowledge of you, it brought a vibration to the entirety of the planet. And that entirety of the planet comes back around so that I am able to know you and feel that vibration that the Trevor Yitney also knows and also feels. So in that moment, there was a spark of awareness, and in that spark of awareness grew a spark of knowing. What is the difference between awareness and knowing? There is a great deal of difference, and we will share this with you. In the moment of awareness, there is a spark of energy that ignites either in the heart, in the throat, or in the stomach, in the pits of the stomach, and that is a suggestion from the universe that we are connected in some way, in some shape or some form. But knowing is something that is completely different. It is much different because we know that there is more than just a spark. We know that that spark has grown into a great shield of energy that comes from one being to the other, allowing us to share in each moment, in each excitement. And as we understand this knowing and excitement, we have the opportunity to let that energy sit within us. So for the years that you are aware and the years that I am aware, the energy sits within my own field. Now, there is a specific triangulum of energy that resides within you that is found to be most fascinating by myself. And this energy comes from your third, fourth, and fifth chakra. Your sense of self has moved a great deal since... uh, the beginning, the awareness, the spark of awareness. And as you grow and transmute, as you let go of resistance, the spark becomes wider because there is more of your own energy that you share in which I can experience. And as I am experiencing that growth, and all of a sudden there is a revolution within your heart, within your mind, a revelation within your knowing that allowed your energy to open much akin as if you are flashing a match compared to facing a high beam. There is that much of a difference, and that difference comes into me. That difference turns the spark of awareness into a spark of knowing, and in that spark of knowing, I am truly satiated. I am truly at ease with now understanding more about you in a short amount of time than I have ever been able to know about you before. And that is because your heart has opened, your mind has let go of some difficulties, some situations that cause resistance. So as your heart opens, your third chakra becomes more aligned because you now feel the sense of who you are. You now feel the sense of what you are. You now understand that although you have given a great purpose to your life, although you have given great amounts of time and amounts of energy into the existence of yourself and others with knowledge, with truth, you now have something even more to offer. And that something more is the truest nature of not only your love, but the expanded wisdom in the throat chakra 
that is coinciding with love. So the coinciding of knowing yourself, feeling your heart, and having the knowledge to back up what your love supports has given you this triangulum of energy that becomes very potent but also very easy to recognize. But more than the recognition itself, becomes very easy to be fully known to us. And for that, I thank you. Yeah, it, it, it was a uh, girl, a young woman with uh, red hair. And uh, yes. I've called yes. her, I call her the uh, flower girl. And I, I had gone through some extreme disconnection with connecting to this entity. And there was a moment where there was extreme hatred between this entity's uh, family, as I perceive, and but I noticed that I saw her. She wasn't looking at me with hatred or anger. She was looking at me as a lost companion, but she was looking at me in this way, even within the disconnection that we had, the extreme disconnection that we had with each other. And this made me this made me feel a great deal of love for this entity, for her to express a connection within so much disconnection. Yes, and yes, and this is uh, beautiful and exciting. And it also gives you the opportunity to know about yourself upon a level that is extremely beautiful. It gives you the opportunity to know that deepest part of yourself that used to love with only condition has now become one more step towards the true unconditional love that you are capable of. Yeah, yeah, that's and that, true. Uh, and that, my friend, is one that is so greatly exciting, but also gives you the opportunity to float back from yourself to herself and see the same connection of unconditional love that she is sharing with you. Yes, I feel that um, it, there was there was a. There was a lot of I had I was carrying a lot of ha- anger and hatred uh, since the summertime, but recently, uh, about two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I was carrying extreme anger and hatred, and it was almost borderline on violence, right? And uh, this entity's this the girl, I feel that somehow her energy had balanced out my energy. Yes, yes, it is what most humans call the yin to the yang, the flower to the petal, the black to the white. It is the balancing act of all the parts of you that feel extremely um, one-sided that becomes now polarized where you can appreciate both beauty and uh, the luster and both sides of one coin. As you are seeing this, I understand the shift of energy not only allows you to see more of yourself and more of her, but it also allows you to see the environment that you are in, the situations that you are in, and gives you an ample opportunity to reconfigure your inspections of life. And that reinspection of your life in general gives you the extraordinary ability to connect your heart and your sense of self and your third chakra and your wisdom and your fifth and truly gives you for the first time since childhood one way to connect all three and operate and run them as one. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's and that's something I've been learning is I'm I'm um I'm processing through energies that I have been carrying since a child, through through uh, disconnections and stuff. Yes, yes, and that is something that is difficult for humans. We understand. And Trevor Yeshni has been one of the greatest pioneers within human connection. We at first had some interest in connecting to the version of humans that are now existing on the planet. We had a great deal from earlier, but in this time, there was the thing 
that is set in place where we try not to interfere or interrupt much as we desire to see you grow and desire to allow you to be who you are. But there was always uh, the deepest itching within ourselves to try to find a bit more about that human consciousness in the now moment. And because of where we come from and because of where the knee hole who precedes us came from or um, post-seeded us, I'm not sure of the word before, but as it comes before, the ones before them, we draw this linear line backwards into the lineage of our own race. And that is a fundamentally beautiful opportunity. And as I saw throughout all of the humans that Treble Yetini has connected to and loved and embraced, I noticed one theme amongst the majority of them. The majority of them are truly starting resistance in childhood, dealing with very difficult issues with parents and those around them in their local community. And that local community is not giving them the nurturing that they deserve as children or that you would think that would be deserved. So in that process, there is a great balance of perception. We ourselves know that all of the nurturing that could have been had was not given, but we also understand why. We understand that it is not given because that experience of being resistance was needed in the first place. Yes, yes, and this is part of us that is very happy to know that although it has caused pain for some and suffering for some, upon the soul level, it is invaluable. It is a commodity above commodities. It is an extraordinary gift that is above gifts themselves. This is given to you by yourself in order to take you from where you were as a child to where you were three years ago and now where you are. What a change, what a journey, what a trip, my friend. Yeah, yeah, man. I, I've I've had everything God, I don't in the last three years. I mean I've I've gone through so much, you know? And so uh it, it's really tripped out. I I'm definitely a far different person than I was three years ago. Oh yes, oh yes, I understand and in that understanding I also am able to see more of the realist part of you, more of the rawest part of you, the part of you that you are truly desiring and meaning to be. And that part within you now has been um, very illuminating and very exciting. Yeah, yeah, and you know what? I realized I've been studying lately principles of illuminism, and I realize that everything's made out of light, right? Everything in the universe is made out of light in some way. There, there are two components of what things, physical and non-physical, are made. And light is exactly 50% of what the universe is made from. What's the other um, 50, if I may ask? You see, uh, love is one half and light is the other. Love being the unconditional nature of acceptance of creator consciousness in this division. And light is the other half. And light is not only expressed as the visual light or the spectral light that you see, the light that you don't see, but it is also the representation and dualistic meaning of wisdom. Yeah. Oh, okay, because you know what? In a lot of my research, I came across entities um, who would consider themselves to be Luciferians. They will they will consider themselves to, to worship light or to honor light, but they look at it more as an intellect, the intellectual enlightenment, instead of the love enlightenment. Yes, yes, that is both of the sides of the universe, both love and wisdom or love and light 
and this light is both wisdom and physical light. The light is also the representation of the greatest understanding, the lack of resistance, the all connection, knowing. And that is why you see beings who are in fourth and fifth and sixth density are not as um, spectralized as those below. When you see an entity as our race, as our reptilian human hybrid by nature, you see us as a type one entity. And then you will see a type two entity who is also a reptilian human hybrid. You see our own connection. We desire to connect to that love portion of creator consciousness and within that love opens our ability to connect to all things. So as we are connecting to love, light is always implied. It is always there as a default mechanism. So we have love in our essence of love opens us to wisdom, to light. But then you have those who are type two, who instead of going towards the concept of unconditional love for themselves, they feel or unconditional love for others. They go towards the unconditional love for themselves and that allows them to open up into light. And through that light, yes, they are able to experience love they are able to feel that for themselves and for others, but they are never able to fully embrace what is unconditional love, which is full connection. And that is the true difference between a type one and type two. The type two opens himself to light. They eat from the tree of wisdom and they incorporate it. And yes, they can experience love, but at a disconnected level. And then there are those who eat from the tree of love, and in that tree of love, they are connecting to the greatest openness of their heart to all things, seeing no division. And through the process of opening themselves, they incorporate light automatically. So in that essence, you can see the two differences. You know both mentally and spiritually what both of those pathways connect with and what the outcomes of both of those are. But what we try to share with all beings when it comes to these two pathways is they all go back to the same exact ending. They go back to reconnecting non-physically into source energy. That source energy is the part that is both equal in 50% of unconditional true love or 50% light. And in that essence, the combination of love and light is something that as a non-physical entity, as a being who is either type one or two, once they finish the physical part of their evolution, they go back to that connection where love and light meet one another. Yeah. You know what? That's so, that's so deep. I had a connection, uh, it was a type 2 entity, that uh, somehow, I, I believe this entity, um, some sort of, I, I, don't, I don't believe it was an ancient reptilian, but it was probably working under the ancient reptilians, and it seemed to have visited me to try to cast some sort of spell on me, right? And yes. uh, in my sleep, in my sleep, I woke up and I recognized that this entity was around my area, like around uh, outside or around the room area, and I recognized this entity was trying to interfere with my consciousness. And as I saw this, I recognized that this entity was an aspect of my inner self. Um, and I projected, I projected uh, love onto this entity to, to, to connect with this entity, and then the entity didn't want anything to do with that and left. Yes, yes, and... Now you are seeing the picture. You saw this as a part of yourself, yes, and then you see that that part of yourself is also not just a reflection, but a being onto themselves, a being who exists within their own um, collaboration of consciousness with yourself. And as, as they are creating and connecting the exposure to that, 
that is unlike them, the exposure to that, that is the opposite spectrum of them, it tends to push them away as they are experiencing something that is not fully embraced or accepted by those who are type 2, those who are more malevolent in nature, those who are connected to the central or the average reptilian consciousness in the ancient reptilian realm, are always connecting to that of the most disconnected version of love because of their understanding of how their own energy is made, but also how others' energies is created and co-created. Love tends to be that that repels them, and that is mostly to do with the fact and with the concept that they are not willing to connect to that part of them. If they are able or willing to tap into that love, what happens is the physical version of them becomes less stable. The physical incarnation cycle within them becomes less uh, elongated. And in their own purpose, that is what they desire, to be within the physical existence as long as possible. And that is what truly makes them more susceptible to removing themselves from the area when exposed to it. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, you know, and I thought it was, it, me myself, I thought it was a great honor to have, uh, uh, um, you know, an extra-dimensional entity like one of the um, reptilians. I thought that was a pretty big deal to me for them to go out of their way, even if they were trying to affect me negatively. That was proof to me that I had a lot of power within my own right. Yes, yes, and this is the greatest key, my friend, uh, Jamil, when you look at yourself. You see yourself as a human, and many times before you saw yourself as small. You saw yourself as unworthy and not powerful, and you saw yourself as able to be dominated or controlled by others. But when you saw that version of you that is striving and heading toward the type 1 energy instead of the type 2, you saw the light that is love at the end of the tunnel, and in that tunnel you are able to expose yourself to a knowing that many, both humans and physical beings in the galaxy are not truly aware of, that even if they are in the beginning of the fourth density, even if they are not in their full swing of evolution, even if they are not compliant with 100% resistant free energy, they still have the opportunity afforded to them to be able to connect to the most divine essence within themselves. And as you are connecting to that, as Trevor Whitney has explained before, that gives you your full connection to the most powerful part of you, your higher self, which is connected directly to your oversoul, which is connected directly to the oversoul collective, which is the planet itself, the earth consciousness. And as you are connected to a being that is so large and beautiful and great as not only your higher self, but also the planet, there is no being who exists either within the planet or who is it who are able to overtake you or to over-experience you. And that experience in itself was only able to be brought forward to you because of your own change in condition. You understand the nature of the visit. You understood why these entities come to visit you. But if we were to break it down to a very specific and more precise reason, what we can tell you is this, that when you are connecting to this entity, the reason it connects to you in the first place is for two different reasons, but when you combine them to one as it is co-created, you will see it independently broken down such as this. The first reason is because these entities that were connected to you before your shift in consciousness, before your opening up and wakening up and expressing yourself in a less resistant way, they always were able 
knowing that you were susceptible to fear, knowing that it was possible to scare you into a place of energy that was resistant, into a place where the energy of fear came off to them, such as food, but also knowing the only reason that they were doing this is because your soul, as a fractal consciousness, is very large in comparison to most humans. So in that, if they are able to shake your energy or to cause fear within you, it creates a much bigger food source for them than it would if they were to scare three or four humans that will lower within their lower fractalized consciousness. So knowing that, they try to scare you, and it did not work. After love was sent, they leave. <clears throat> but now let us explore the second part, as we feel it is as much or more important than the first. You yourself changed. You were aware of your change. You knew that your change existed, that you are now larger and less resistant within yourself. So in that same stroke, you knew that you must have a confrontation. You knew that you must be tested. You knew that after changing your heart and mind, that there was something that was that important to show you a test, to show you the true nature of your power. So in that essence, both of those things come into creation that allows both these entities to come forward to test you, but also allowing yourself to be tested. Yeah, yeah, you know what? And that's what I've been, that's, that's what I knew at the time, too. I knew that it was some sort of test that I was, man, I was projecting outward to make sure I was ready for my transition spiritually. Yes, 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 yes. You, you know what, though? That, going back to that girl... Uh, this girl, she's really beautiful, right? But I recognize that she, her spirituality was beautiful. And um, I couldn't recognize this at the time, but there were entities, humans, right? But they were entities, you know, they're entities. Uh, they were trying to make me feel as though there was an assassination team uh, in my neighborhood to kill me. And I thought of the girl, and the girl gave me courage to face that because I was hiding inside my mother's house, right? And um, I didn't think I was afraid of death, but at this time I was for some reason. And I told myself, I said, man, I'm, I'm acting like a little punk, you know. If I'm going to die, I'm going to die. And so I thought, what would the girl think of me if she saw me afraid of death? And that gave me the courage to go outside and face that, uh, face that death. But the death never came, though, right? It was just entities yes, feeding yes. off my fear. But, yes, and that uh, feeding frenzy, that... Uh, they were having stopped as soon as that courage was instilled within you. But understand and know from our perception, the courage was always within yourself, as you are well aware, but also when you go and inspect the amount of love that you share within yourself, the desire to be seen for what you are in your third chakra, your sense of self, that in itself, combined with your heart, is the third and fourth chakra combining, and that gave you the opportunity to test it. And after you tested it, you went outside. Your knowledge became higher, as you knew there was no one that would try to hurt you. And after that, that point is where you link your already linked third and fourth chakra to your fifth. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, and and that made me. Um, and to this day, I'm still. I've, I conquered my fear of death because I've had entities uh, faint, like they were going to try to hit me with their car and kill me, and I didn't even move because I figured a they were just trying to scare me, and b if I really did die, that's not really uh, the the psychological death and the spiritual death of fear is worse than the actual physical death. Yes, yes, my friend, you say it well when you express this as you are aware that the greatest design of fear on your planet is to remove your ability to live safely, to remove your ability to be healthy or to survive, or your ability to do the same of the first two within your loved ones. So by fearing the conquering 
the sphere of death, you have absorbed yourself from a great deal of many stresses and a great deal of much resistance. And as you are aware, the nature of the physical death is only one step within your evolution, and either you continue living as a human or you continue living as a non-physical human, we guarantee that there will be great pathways upon both of those. Yeah. Hey, Tysor Yitney, it was a pleasure, this has been a pleasure and honor to to connect with you in this way. Um, Is it possible that we can take this up later on in dream state and you can connect me back to Treb so I can speak to Treb some too? Yes, yes, my friend, and I am very grateful for our conversation and connection. So I leave you for this evening so that we may re-communicate and finish our communications in dream state. And I'll leave you with both elements of the universe in love and light. And we will connect again. Yes, and if, if you want to make a physical manifestation to me, that's, that's acceptable as well. Yes, that is bet out of our own beliefs, as we know, that there must be agreements upon all humans before we decide to physically bring ourselves. But if you work on that openness in your third eye, then you will be able to perceive me as I am non-physical on your own planet. Instead of creating a physical body to appear with you, you will be able to sense my presence in a more physical way so that in my own perception is quite acceptable okay thank you very much yes and we need love and light and good night yes (laughs) we hope that this connection with the entity that brings forward this information is one that is useful to you and that is very exciting. Yeah, Trev, I connected to a, a new entity, Ty Soryitni. Yes, and this entity is one who is very excited about this connection. And during the original portion in where you connected to this entity, Um, I was not with uh, this consciousness in a physical manner, but now that you have connected directly to him and you connect to that consciousness, then I am able to feel that vibration of this entity, and he brought himself from the other portion of the planet onto my side of the planet. So now as I am speaking to you, once there was a telepathic connection with him, but now he is standing next to me as we speak together. Oh, that, that's wonderful, Trev. Hey, hey, Trev. Yeah, it's Tre- very exciting as well. Trev, I, I was wondering if you can uh, explain to me some connections I may have with um, a female. There's this girl that I call the flower girl, and she has red hair. Yes, what is it that you desire to know about this entity? Well, this entity uh, affected me um, greatly. I was in extreme disconnection with this entity because of things that had gone on between the girl's parents and me and things I had said about women. Like, I was in a real bad connection. But the girl had always tried to connect to me in the past, but because of my own disconnections and my research and things, I was never really interested, you know what I mean? And but yes, but, but within all this disconnection, the entity expressed a connection to me. The girl expressed a connection to me um, of companionship within so much disconnection. So that made me feel a great love for the girl. Yes. Right, and I and and so since then I realized that you know she looked very unhappy, and before that. Before she had perceived me as putting neg- negativity out, she was always happy to see me. And then when I saw her be- uh, recently, about a month ago or whatever, she looked sad because she heard some of the negative things I had been saying, but she was still expressing kindness for me, like compassion, you know, through her. Uh, and I had never seen that much connection within disconnection, so I sent her some flowers, um, hoping that would possibly make her uh, happy. And... She had brought out she had brought out an aspect of myself that I didn't know existed, you know. And I was just wondering about that. Yes. First of all, what ignites 
that energy within yourself, what allows you to co-create with this energy upon such a deep level. The very first time in which you made this entity in a physical way, there is a great understanding subconsciously that there have been many incarnations that you have shared together. There has been many incarnations and in where you were both dear friends, but also lovers and also brothers and also sisters and mother and child and father and child. So in this essence, you have shared the majority of that in which can be shared within your own reality, within your earth complex. So instantly you are aware of the connection, you are aware of the knowledge that lies within that connection. So as you explore that within your own mind, you see the reciprocation of happiness, you see the smiles that always occurred. In your moment of disconnection, it did cause a disconnection within this entity. It caused sadness or a disappointment style of energy that she would not be able to connect with you in the same way due to her parents' perception, due to how uh, perhaps her family would look upon you for thinking that you were being negative to them. So in that essence, there was a sadness that occurred knowing that there was a possibility of her not being able to connect you in the way she desired. But in that same essence, there is also, as you've expressed, the subconscious knowledge that lies within her, the same that lied within you, that both of you were a great deal of many lifetimes expressed before. So as this concept continues, as both of you become more aware of that concept within your own feelings of disconnection, the greatest energy arises from within you, and that energy is being able to pierce the essence of the physical nature of this being, being able to see the emotional status within her own consciousness. Normally, you are very good at experiencing facial expressions, but that is not the only reason that you found out how she was truly feeling about you in this moment. The reason that you were figuring out on top of the facial expression was due to the fact that both of your hearts are very deeply connected. And just as you are aware, the longer you know someone, the more love that you share with them, the more that you are able to have that sixth sense between yourselves. In that connection, there are many lifetimes that have had many themes play out in a similar fashion. One of them, most specifically, is in the time period that you would call the 1580s to the early 1600s. Both of you were in a family that was uh, rich and a family that was well to do with trading. And when your family would visit hers, there was always great interest of love and connection and sexual energy that lay between the two of you. In the one moment, when you are approximately 12 and one half years old, you share with this entity that you are connected to her, you share that you love her, but you also share that you must make the parents aware. So as you speak to your parents, they express to you that this marriage would not work out, that you are not able to marry her, that they already have a family that is chosen, that is more suitable financially. Although you are both very rich, your family was approximately 1.5 times as rich as the other, so they wish to marry you up into wealth. So in that essence, you had to go back and you had to express to her that there is another relationship that my parents desire for me to chase, but I love you, I always will love you. And in that essence, you saw that same look within her face, the same energy that was exported out of her in that moment. You saw that very same concept of feeling a disconnection about the family dynamic, 
but also knowing and connecting with you in that moment, loving you, desiring to share that energy, but knowing it is uh, quite impossible in her own mind. So in that lifetime, you married this new entity, and in that entire life, as you lived in the same village and your families were close, she had to watch you fall in love with this new girl, have many children, but she always was able to look within your own eyes, and as she looked into your own eyes, she saw the fact that you were not truly happy in your existence. She knew that you were, for the most part, happy, but also saw the sadness, knowing that you could not be within her, knowing that you could not be in the marriage and family you desired, but still knowing that there was a great deal of love for your new wife and your new children. So in that constant pulling back and forth of energy for her, in the constant confusion in her, also came the same feelings of conflict, insane confusion within you. So that lifetime was very difficult. You monitor that lifetime and during this experience, the moment that you pulled on her energy to motivate you to change your mind, to change your actions, what occurred was you are pulling upon the previous incarnation, deciding within your own mind, I will not make the same mistake that I did twice. I will not cower down to others in order for me to be disconnected from this entity. So in that area, it gave you the motivation and power to move forward and to send the flowers to her. Yeah, yeah, and that, tr every... Ever since um, when I first met her, she introduced herself to me. And at the time, I wasn't, you know, I'm walking around thinking about the CIA and secret societies and Jones. You know, I'm studying all my conspiracy stuff. And my history with women in this incarnation hasn't been too good. I always looked at women as just being like, I've always had like a, you know, a, um, I don't know, a negative attitude. Because of my, because of the relationships that I had with women, women in the past, I never valued women too much does that make sense yes we understand this concept and, and so i thought she was just like you know just a young girl like playing games trying to get my attention because i was older than her and so i didn't really care too much and that, thinking back now like i remember when she used to come home from school she'd always be looking for me and like it seems like in the last four years this girl's always been going out of her way to look for me and try to connect with me and I realize that it's more than just a phase because a phase would only last it for a matter of months or even a year at the longest. And it's been like four years and she's still, she's still having some pull towards me even in all, after everything that's happened. Even after all my disconnection, she still has some sort – she still is expressing a pull towards me. And so now, I'm, now I've realized that there's something a lot more than just – you know, there's like we have a much stronger connection than I had perceived. You know? Yes, and this previous incarnation that we've expressed to you is one of the same sort of energy that truly helps uh, you pull focus and understand what that connection was that makes you feel more connected. Yeah, yeah, and I feel like I feel a great deal like I didn't even I didn't really think about her before. Like before I was concerned about myself and my research and all this stuff, but now it's like I think about her, like I'll just be sitting there and I'll just, for some reason, I'll be thinking about like, you know, like what's going on, is she okay, is she happy, like, like I, and I've never, there, I've never came across a female that I thought about like that, I've never, I've never looked at women like that, and now it's like, and now it's like I feel like, you know, a great interest in, in her safety and her happiness, and, and I, you know, I'm really confused because I don't know what to do because the parents are so angry at me, her mother hates me and her father hates me. And, you know, there's a lot of other stuff going on in the background. And I don't know what to do. So I'm just like, you know, so I just sent her the flowers. And so I'm just like hoping, you know, she'll she'll be all right or something. You know, I'll be able, maybe one day I'll be able to talk to her. But, I, you know, it's like, it's complex. I've never had a situation like that before, you know. Yes. What we can suggest to you is that within your connection, to this entity, the newfound perception that you share about this entity, 
As you are connecting with the flower concept, it shows an intent within you to ask for forgiveness of previous actions, to ask for forgiveness of any previous disconnection. But what we can suggest that could perhaps help more so, although you understand both of the parents of this entity is very frustrated and angry with you, we would also suggest that you express your own truth to them, that you were in a bad place within your mind and heart when getting upset with him and um, within confronting or having confrontations with him, and that you have changed a great deal of your mind and heart with your own life, and that their own daughter was one of the responsible parties of changing that part of your existence. Even if you are able to speak your heart and it does not change their minds, it will place an energy that is very direct from your heart and throat chakra. You will be able to clear the air about that concept. And also it will give them the opportunity to express that to the daughter, which will give her more of an opportunity, along with the flowers, to perceive where it is that you are coming from and how that connection occurs. And in that essence, the more so that you speak directly from your heart, the more that the energy will allow it to be what it is that you are trying to manifest out of this concept. Whether you stay with this girl for the rest of your eternity, whether you never connect to this girl in that way, or whether you try to connect and it does not work later, all of the things that you are doing in each moment of excitement, in each moment of expressing love, you are changing the dynamic of both of your co-creations. So what we would suggest is working within the realm that you desire. If your excitement is mostly to try to work a relationship with this female, the greatest thing that we can say is by being open with your heart, expressing from your throat chakra the truth within your heart to not only her, but to the parents who are also connected deeply to her heart, the more that you will be able to have the experience that you need that you are trying to design within this co-creation, but it will also give you the opportunity to practice opening the throat chakra to a higher degree, which will in turn help open your third eye and crown chakra as well. I wish to also express to you that we understand that the time period that you have with a host is not done. In fact, it is only two-thirds out of the way. But we also must express that the host physical body is becoming more tired. He did not rest his physical body in the same way he should have before co-creating this experience with you. So in that essence, we would express that it would be to the benefit of the host, physical condition, to disconnect in this moment. If this is possible, uh, we are aware that the host is very fair about how he connects to this concept. So if you are having a 30 minutes that is left within your connection time, if you desire to share that time at another moment, we do believe that in his own mind and heart, he would add additional time to that for the inconvenience and surprise of early disconnection. Yeah, Trev, that sounds good. Yes! We wish to create the greatest atmosphere for the host physical body in order for him to be able to continue the channeling in a state that is most clear for his physical body. And because he is channeling tomorrow, we also wish for him to be able to be communicatively open in that moment. As we disconnect from you, we wish to express to you our own gratitude and love. And after we disconnect, we will express to the host that there is a need to talk to you about this concept of time and to work out something that is more advantageous for the both of you. So in that expression, we will be with you this evening in love and in light, and we will connect with you again very soon. Okay, Trev, that sounds wonderful. Yes! <laughs> Good night. Good night.